Hi everyone, hope you're all well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be discussing professional coloured pencil techniques and top tips that can really help you when you're drawing realistic feathers. If you want a more in-depth focused tutorial where you can draw along with me and where I discuss every single step, layer and colour that I'm using, then head over to my Patreon. I'll leave the link underneath in the video description. You'll also gain access to over 50 tutorials, all animal themed. I'd say firstly, being a pet portrait and wildlife artist, I draw a lot of fur and there is a slight difference between how you approach each of them. So with feathers, they're made up of like really fine hairs, meaning that you have to be so delicate with each line that you draw. You also want to draw in sort of short linear motions so each pencil stroke is quite precise in a way, which is quite a bit different to how I approach fur. Feathers are quite difficult to draw in that they often have patterns on them, which you have to consider while still building up the texture, especially like owl feathers like these ones. And a lot of birds of prey and even like garden birds, they do have quite a lot of sort of subtle patterns that make up the feathers as well. In terms of colours and materials, the paper that I'm working on is hot pressed extra white Fabriano Artistico paper. Um, and in terms of colours, I like to start with the pale shades of the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils as the base layer. They're predominantly wax based, so they provide that really creamy soft surface to work on top of, which enables you to capture that silky smooth feel to the feathers. And I'd say with coloured pencils, it is always best to work from light to dark. And I think the shades like Buff Titanium, Pink White and Raw Umber 10% are perfect as those initial base layers, especially for feathers that are sort of this browny, um, sort of blonde yellowy colour. I like to map out the areas of light and dark by roughly shading in the certain areas of shadow. But I'm also still drawing in the same direction as the feathers, that's quite important. It doesn't matter too much if your pencil is quite blunt at this stage because it'll give you that really even coverage. You can then start to go in with your warmer colours like the Van Dyke Brown, the Burnt Umber and the Terracotta. These are all Faber-Castell Polychromo shades. I find the Polychromo pencils are quite vibrant and excellent for building up tonal value and layering pigments. And they do work quite well with the Luminance pencils. The Polychromos are predominantly oil based, whereas the Luminance are predominantly wax based. So the wax based pencils are, are really good for sort of blending, but the Polychromo oil based pencils are really good for um, getting that vibrant pigment down and just building up those layers. You can see how I'm building up those patterns on the feathers as I'm drawing by literally making tiny squiggly marks with my pencil. You don't need to spend hours and hours perfecting each line, it's more about giving a representation of your reference photo instead of producing a photo replica. So drawing in little squiggly shapes can just be a quicker way to capture um, that pattern detail in the feathers. If you sort of break it down and visualise what you're drawing as a series of shapes and sort of separate it into certain colours, it can just make it a lot easier to draw. But you do still want those lines to be as soft as you can by, you know, keeping that really light pressure. And with feathers, the difference between feathers and fur, like one of the main differences I'd say, is that with feathers there's almost like an uh, even gap in between every single tiny little hair strand whereas fur is sort of all over the place really. I think another good tip for either drawing feathers or fur um, if you use really vibrant colours really lightly sort of in between your layers it can give you that like realistic level of depth because it can almost give the impression that you know the light is hitting the feathers or the fur at that specific point. You really do need to apply such a light pressure with every single layer that you add. Um, but once you've started to build up that pigment and you've got you know a bit more of a contrast you can then go in with some of your darker pigments like the dark sepia and even the black in some areas just to get those darks really really dark.
because feathers have that sort of silky smooth texture you want to do almost like back and forth motions with a sort of neutral pigment like the warm greys of the polychromo shades um, and that'll just really blend everything together and just smooth everything out you definitely don't want to be seeing any grain from the paper underneath you want to get rid of that tooth completely and just squash it down um, just so all your pigments and all your layers are completely smooth and you're representing that feather texture I'm also just darkening some of those um, details that we added before that make up the sort of patterns on the feathers. You want to add some definition by just darkening them with like a dark sepia or the black. To achieve that intricate precision, I like to use the craft knife slice tool, which enables you to use the removal technique to literally scrape away those top layers of pigment and make super fine detailed marks that you wouldn't be able to achieve with just colour pencils alone. And I actually think it's at this point where you start adding those sort of feathery texture details um, that really makes it look realistic. Sticking with the removal method, I also like to use the Ultra Fine Mono Zero Elastoma Eraser which is almost like a pen with a really uh, fine rubber at the end of it. So again, it's great for removing those top layers of pigments and revealing either the paper underneath or just, you know, making sections a little bit lighter. Obviously, it's not as precise as if you're using the Craft Knife Slice tool but it is really good for sort of removing larger bits of pigment, especially when, you, when you're only working on like a smaller scale piece. I hope you enjoyed this short time lapse video where I discussed my top tips when it comes to drawing realistic feathers with coloured pencils. And like I said at the start, you can gain exclusive access to this full length focus tutorial and many, many more over on my Patreon and the link is down below in the video description. If you liked this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.